SD card full. All right, hold on. <laughs> See? Menu. SD card. Format. I don't know what's on it, but. <laughs> if we ever do like crowdfunding for the show or anything, we can give people access to all these old YouTube videos because they uh, they all exist out there. We could just put them in an unlisted playlist. Okay. I know we talked about that. I think there's probably something we should look at. Yeah, we could probably do subscribe star and just check it out. Is that the one um, that John Patton gun collector is doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I I have concerns about their gun stuff as well, but for this show, it'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. I'm fine. Like we just need to sit down and figure out what subscription levels, like what do we want to do? Things like that. So Yeah, totally. We should do one like ridiculous and say, Hey, if you like donate this much, you can come on our show. <laughs> if you give us a hundred dollars, you can come talk to us on the show. <laughs> All right, cool. I love that idea, actually. <laughs> Let them buy their way on. Yes, yeah, so I'm like, we are totally worth Oh, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. All right, cool. Here we go. Listening to podcast is no replacement for real training. While we attempt to provide accurate commentary, we hold no responsibility on how you use the information we provide. Get medical training. In the blink of an eye, every day order can be replaced with once in a lifetime chaos. Be prepared. This is the Civilian Medical Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of we. This is I don't even know what. Hold on, that we like shooting skinny medic. I have no idea what podcast <laughs> we're on right now. Uh, we are on the Civilian Medical Podcast. Uh, I've got my good. I was going to make fun of you being old, but here I am forgetting what podcast I'm on. That's karma. So what gets me. So that's anyway, what you, that's what you get. That's exactly what I get. So my name is Dietrich Skinny Medic. I've got my good friend Sean, um, and I was going to call him old and make this big joke about it, had it all built up and then. I totally jacked it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to talk crap? What about the what about the EMT that has Die in his first name? I don't think so. Yeah. Oh my gosh, oh. Diet Rich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, how have you been? Long time no see. I know, been good. I know we've both been super busy right now. Uh, you've been moving, and I'm in the middle of uh, writing checks for Mrs. Skinny Mac to build her house. So, um, <laughs> they both both those things actually sound awful. Both of them are super stressful, uh, but we are busy. Uh, medical gear is good. So we, uh, in case those of you have missed it, uh, we start a subscription box now, uh, Medical Gear Outfitters. I'll just do a cheap plug for that. Uh, yeah. Um, that's been really cool. A lot of people are excited about that. It's kind of like a mystery box. There's three different levels. So you kind of get to choose what level you want to do. Um, so cool. We're excited. We're busy. So looking forward to the end of the year. I'm excited about that. I, I was one of the first people. I, wait, I was the first person to sign up, wasn't I? Yeah, you were super excited about that, being the first person to sign up for that. So, nope. and, then we're, and then we're traveling the next couple of weeks together. So not together, but we're going to meet in the middle. Does that yeah. sound right? <laughs> yeah, basically. I mean, we're, we're, it's like uh, the longest, you know, in the movies where the, the, the people are running towards each other for the embrace. <laughs> we're doing that. It's just over a couple thousand miles. Over a couple, you're flying. Like I'm just gonna drive down. Like we'll 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 be there eventually. So exactly, <laughs> we're gonna be at the Iraq veteran eight 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 YouTuber shoot uh, this coming weekend. I don't know when the show's coming out. Actually, um, it may the, already be done by now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't even know. But uh, and we're we're actually doing a, a medical class, a trauma class uh, on Sunday for all the content creators and everything. That should be kind of fun. Yeah, like I'm excited about doing that. Hope some the manufacturers there are invited and then the content creators. So, you know, guys are shooting uh, either part time or as a hobby or full time, at least to get them some medical training. So, in case something happens at their home range. Yeah, totally. I'm excited about that. Literally, all I'm going to do is just stand there and crack jokes while you actually do the work. <laughs> That's what I was planning on doing. I was just going to no. make like the, like I was going to do like the dirty joke thing. And like every time you say something about four or six inches or packing a, packing a wound or something like that, I was just going to throw the dirty jokes out there. 
Perfect. Well, we'll <laughs> both just joke. Nobody will learn anything, and it'll be exactly like it should be. That's probably exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. And then, uh, yeah, lots of travel going on. Uh, I'm so glad to be back. I have actually missed the show. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just got to sell your house and move, and that's what I did. Yeah, life's busy. But, man, as we were talking about before they started recording, like, you podcasters, you guys are listening to our show y'all hound us like crazy i'm like we miss a show and man we're getting email hate messages like all this stuff i like so i know that you guys love obviously you guys love the show and i appreciate it appreciate the support uh those of you who are listening to us and and sharing it so i appreciate it yeah uh, 100 percent podcast people man if you don't get that show out there is hell to pay like we were doing uh probably the first year i was doing two youtube videos a week posting two and i'm like all right we're gonna go down to one like life's busy Medical gear is busy, so I just want to go down to one. And no one has said a word. And like I missed last week, didn't post a YouTube video last week. And no one said anything. Nobody did hate mail and all that. And we've missed the podcast and people go crazy. Yeah, they have. Uh, we put out one already this week. This one yes. might drop tomorrow, maybe. I mean, might as well. You know what? We skipped a couple of weeks. Why don't we just put out two in one week and that way it'll be fun? Yeah. And then we, twice in the same week, we might need some medicine for that. I, I, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, what did you want to talk about in episode 25? So what I was thinking about is we recently just had a hurricane uh, come up to the coast of South Carolina. And it's always, you know, during the season, people are not prepared for a lot of things, whether it be um, a hurricane or we're going to, uh, for you, the winter season. Uh, for me, I get like a couple ice storms here in South Carolina. So just people are not prepared in general. So uh, I just want to talk about uh, some items that you can carry to be more prepared for this type of emergency situation. And uh, I feel really awkward that you're holding a phone at me right now. Uh, <laughs> I was taking a picture to post. And we're, like, we're recording. Yeah, we're recording. Um, just to prove we're actually doing some work. Uh, exactly. So I, and this is good. We're going to talk about medical in this, in this episode, but I want to kind of expand it out just a little bit and talk about some other things that you could carry in your house, uh, maybe carry in your vehicle, just some things we would prepare in emergency for disasters. This could be like a, a hurricane, a tornado, flooding, things like that. So even with uh, my wife and I building our new house, there's a room up under the stairway. It's a, a one and a half story house. So on the stairway, I, I told Kenneth, I was like, this is a perfect place for like a tornado because there's, it's, it's been uh, reinforced. If a tor it's in the middle of the house, there's no windows. And so like a tornado comes up, we're on top of a hill. So was concerned about that. I said, we wanted to put a light in there. We put a couple extra outlets inside this closet because the contractor kind of looked at it. It's kind of weird when we said we want a couple extra outlets inside of a closet. But I said, you know, I said, this will be our safe room. I was like, I want to put pillows, blankets, food, water, things like that in here. In case of emergency, this will be our safe room that we go to. Uh, and for bad weather, things like that. So and you just, trying to pre-plan and be ahead of these things is important. I remember a couple of years ago when we were down at big three together and there was a hurricane come up and I was like, all right, we're out of here. And everyone started leaving and like, there was no gas. Uh, people were lined up by the gas stations. And I remember they were all like, guys, you need to leave early because they knew what was coming. And we were like, all right, yeah, we'll shoot. Let's just shoot a little bit more. And when we left, like it was like, all right, crap. I got to make it, you know, to halfway home before I could even get fuel. Yeah, that was actually, so uh, you were at the hotel that was directly on Daytona Beach, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, same hotel we were, yeah, we were all at the same hotel. And uh, yeah, that was actually awful. We we basically had to leave our hotel. Um, they basically shut it down. They shut down that entire area. So had to leave our hotel. We had to find other hotels because, you know, we were coming in from Michigan and Colorado. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that was pretty tough. So funny story, we were at a gas station and there was long gas lines and we had a rental car. And uh, some dude tried to cut in from the other direction, like literally tried to cut. So I, I get out of the car um, and I was not trying to incite. I, w I wasn't trying to be like a big problem. I just walked up and he rolled down his window. And I was like, hey, man, the line's back there. We've all been waiting here for 30, 45 minutes. You're not going to cut in front of everybody. <laughs> I, I was I was not uh, I was not aggressive or anything like that. I was just like, was like Jeremy standing behind you or. No, no, Jeremy wasn't <laughs> with us. It was Aaron and I, and um, he was in the car. Like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm about to die. And I was, I was just super polite. I was like, look, we've been waiting here for a, for a long time. You're not cutting in front of everybody. And uh, so he started complaining a little bit, and I was like, look, I get it. I totally get it. I'm almost out of gas, and I might might have to push it up to the pump. But you're not cutting in front of everybody. 
And so he didn't. And he, <laughs> he drove off and got in line. And I nice. was, oh, God, thank the, thank you, Lord. Uh, but, but we see it on the news. Stuff like that happens. And people get aggressive. Like they, if you, even like when they start running out of food, things like that. And we're not even talking about the crazy prepper like stuff. Like this is just yeah. a natural disaster. Like your family starts running out of food. You get pretty aggressive. Like you're going to, you're not going to let your kids go about food and water and stuff like that. So um, being prepared, being thinking about this months, weeks ahead is super important because when the storm is coming or the snowstorm or hurricane, whatever storm it is, then it's too late to be prepared for that point. Now you just got to do the best you can. So thinking about this, you know, months, days out and it can get, it can get kind of expensive. So if you think about it as a year long, I've told people that think about like, all right, for November, I want to think about my food preps. I just want to have some food, just a, a few weeks of food. Let's just start, you know, just to have a little extra, just buy a little extra at the grocery store. Uh, if you're talking about, you know, your ammo, like, all right, well, this month I'll buy a little extra ammo. I'll buy a little, you know, I, I, our first t- thing we're going to talk about on our list is portable radio. So maybe you, this month, next week, month, I'll buy that radio and I had a checklist done. So you don't have to go out today and buy all of this products that we're going to talk about. You just space it out and use it as in your budget. Yeah, totally 100% agree. And you, you mentioned ammo just a second ago. For me, whenever I go into a mode where I'm like, okay, I'm trying to plan for this natural disaster. I mean, we see it, we see how things go. And one of my first things that I always consider is, is exactly what you mentioned, ammo, is how do I defend the things that I have if necessary? So for me, like the, when I'm putting together an emergency kit or whatever, it's like, hey, how do I, if, if worse comes to worse, how do I defend this kit and make sure that I keep this kit that I put together and make sure nobody takes it from me. So mm-hmm. when I'm doing that, I always consider, you know, what defense is in this, whether it's pepper spray, bear spray, firearms, like whatever you feel comfortable with, but the world is a crazy place and people that are desperate will do crazy things. So I always say, if you're building a kit, have a way to defend that kit from people who should wish to take it from you. I agree, hundred percent. I mean, we just talked about and you kind of mentioned that that if someone's two year old is going to do about food, they're going to get a lot more aggressive. Uh, oh, yeah. you, you see it in you know like Katrina in New Orleans, things like that. Like they were riding. Like I remember in, when Katrina happened, like they pulled EMS out, and like we're not going to respond to calls anymore. Like after the storm was done, like there's like Boop, we're going to leave you to yourselves for a little bit, let you calm down, and so that thing, kind of thing happens. And um, yes build to defend your house to build to defend your car or whatever shelter you've decided to be in that's important to build defend it yep totally completely agree okay so got that out of the way yes. and it, like it could be tasers it could be pepper spray bear spray knives guns like whatever you feel comfortable with whatever you feel like you could stop somebody who was trying to take your life or that of someone that you love, like doesn't matter what it is, but your first thing on here is portable radio, which is really relevant to, uh, to me lately. W- what are your thoughts here? So I think portable radio is something that you can, uh, this way battery operated that you can listen to news alerts, news, to listen to, um, listen to, um, the radio to see what kind of news thing is coming across that so they're, they're, they're saying the storm's coming or whatever the flooding is this happening. So to be able to make it battery operated, uh, you know, sometimes the cell phone signals may not be great uh, during a, a disaster. So just having the old school radio that you can turn to 92.5 or hundred point five or whatever, and have those on there. Um, when I talked, when I first made this out, I almost put a slash cause like portable radio, I feel like we be taken both ways when I talk about portable radio lists. Is one is that, that it's, it's a radio that you can listen to uh, and hit, get information broadcast. The other one is if you're a ham operator, um, that you can have a radio that you program, that you can talk to other ham operators. You can listen to ham operators and follow down the list. I put police scanner because some of us may not be ham operators, but you know, having that portable radio uh, little walk signs. I think they may be, I don't know if you can get those anymore now. Uh, then they, then they're all passed or something like that, but. Oh, uh, what, what, what was it? The little walk sign radios, uh, the little ham radios that everybody was buying off Amazon for a while. Uh, well, uh, just recently the FCC basically started enforcing some stuff, which made a difference. Basically bow Fang yes. uh, and some other manufacturers were putting out radios that were non-compliant with FCC regulations and the FCC decided that they were going to start enforcing those regulations, which led to this like, kind of big panic. Uh, which is why this is relevant to me. I actually bought a few. It was something that I had been meaning to. I bought some. I bought three of the Baofeng UV82s. Mm-hmm. Um, not great, 
you can get bigger antennas, but uh, they're they're definitely decent and definitely something that a you can listen to FM radio, you can listen to the scanner channels, you can transmit if necessary if you have a ham radio license. But in case of apocalypse or you know hurricane or whatever, I I don't really care. Like you want to find me and hmm. you know, do whatever because I'm using a ham radio illegally. That's fine. Go ahead, do that. Uh, I'm trying to survive out here. Um, but I am actually studying for my ham radio exam. Uh, I plan to take that at the end of November here in Colorado. Nice. And, uh, just to, you know, just add, to add another skill to the, uh, to the skill box. And um, just because, you know, if I have them, I want to know how to use them and I want to be, you know, at least able to use them in case of emergency. I've actually got them in the office. They're all sitting there. I bought three of them. They're about 36 bucks each. And they're the kind that the FCC is now cracking down on. Uh, you can use them no problem. Just they can't sell them anymore. Yeah, we we bought a couple of those as well. We probably have four or five of them. Um, and I've been doing the same. I've been saying for a year now that I was going to get my ham ham radio license. And I make it about halfway through reading the book or reading the little app that you go through and answer the questions. And I scroll off and get distracted. Yep. Um. So that that's me. That's my confession. Um. I, I've been saying it for a while. I'm like, all right, I'll download the app. I'll start going through the chapters and, and you know answering the questions like all right cool I got this got this got this I, being around EMS being around the radios word of the EMS like I know just has to be dangerous about them um, so but it's definitely on my goal list is to get my ham radio license so when I put in that poor radio that was kind of my thought and you could use that however you wanted to maybe the poor radio if you just want to listen to that but I do I like those radios like that because you know I put in my EMS channels my fire channels put my police channels. Uh, you can even plug in your radio music to that. You can just punch the frequency in and it comes up. Um, you can listen to the weather on that, those little radios like that. So, and that's pretty affordable. Like I said, you can buy the shoulder mics if you want to, if you want to hear better, you can buy yeah. the earpieces, you don't look super tactical. Uh, you can buy the bigger antennas. So I think those are all a great option. You can find those on Amazon as of right now, pretty good price. Yeah, totally. Uh, I think I paid 36, 37 bucks each and they came with the earpieces and chargers and uh, every, everything that you would need antennas and you can, you can even upgrade the antennas for extra, extra distance. I've actually tested mine, uh, just driving down the road. So I knew what my boundaries were. And yeah, uh, we, we've done it before. Like we put in the little family network channels yeah. that are supposed to be for the little ones, but do they, if, like the FCA gets to the, like, we, we don't do this actually. Cause I don't want the FCA to get mad at me. Yeah. Um, cause they, they probably got higher wattage, but yeah, you can put those channels in like, and we talk on our property. I mean, we may have talked on our property. Like I don't want the FCA to, <laughs> I mean, no, we have never do anything like that. So no. you yeah. don't want see rolling up hot and, and killing dogs and things like that. Yeah. And like the black Tahoe's I'd be really upset. I'd be jealous <laughs> that a Tahoe when they pull it up. I'm like, think things got more LEDs than mine. So, oh, um, I think radio, the, this is communication and not just uh, communication, but information, right? Like the, the man who has the most information is the richest man there is. And in the, these cases, when you can listen to police channels and you can listen to fire channels and you can understand what places to avoid and where things have gotten bad and listen to FM radio, if it's, if it's, or even AM, if it's, mm -hmm. available, uh, I think that's huge. And it was definitely a hole that I've recently filled. So. And don't don't rely on your cell phones. Um, you no. can see that even like at, if you're at a college football game, your cell phone doesn't work very well. Uh, there's just it's network overload. Um, so don't rely on that. So text messages is probably a better way to communicate if you're having problems uh, with your phone. But don't rely on that during an emergency. Um, towers may be down. There just may be an information overload. They have said before, um, like Verizon, um, they're going to pull all of their if during a disaster, they're going to pull all their networks down and they have a program called first net and it's for first responders. So if they have an emergency, they're going to pull down all their network to help support that first net. So first responders can talk on the phone and, and communicate. So if you're not on first net, which you have to be a first responder to do that, like EMT firefighter, police officer, then your network may not be up during an emergency. So having some kind of portable radio way to communicate with your neighbors or people across the town, Super important. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Honestly, go to a major sporting event and tell me how how well your cell phone works. On, yes, off, off of Wi-Fi. Like the answer is not well at all. Correct. All right. So yeah, portable radios and ways to ways to get information and ways to communicate. I think that's super important. Um, what do you have next? So flashlights. Um, I think power outages is always a big problem, whether it be ice, snow, water, whatever is causing the uh, 
emergency. So having flashlights that are charged um, is important. Uh, but having them staged different places in your vehicle around the house uh, is important. Um, and my wife gets on me all the time about not having them charged. So that's one of my things. I, I, I got to keep them charged up. Uh, so like last year, we knew there was a big ice storm coming. So we had all of our lights. So we went and like the kids were looking like it was a big scavenger hunt looking for lights. And so we just lined them up on the kitchen table and we had them all charging. That way, when the ice storm hit, we knew that we were going to have lights charged and ready to go. So uh, flashlights, big, small, whatever. Uh, just make sure they're charged. Make sure the batteries are good. Uh, they're not corroded, things like that prior to. Uh, probably would have some extra batteries on there. We've got that listed on there later on, but uh, just being a little prepared to provide some light for yourself. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, yeah, when the power's out, like it gets dark at night. Like, yes, super dark. Super dark. So you're trying to cook, uh, play board games or whatever. So some lights are important. Uh, we have the old school lanterns, like the kerosene lanterns, uh, but we use those outside because I don't. That, I don't want a fire happening so you know if we're outside we'll use those kind of lanterns but inside flashlights yeah the, totally agree and flashlights are huge um we we have experienced a couple times like blackouts and stuff here and, and it's like you, it's hard to function with with no method of light and then you imagine you know trying to keep yourself safe trying to make sure people aren't coming in to take your stuff all, all that having light is absolutely very very important it's funny how many times you'll walk by and like flip a light switch. You're like, oh, never mind, power's out. Dang it! <laughs> exactly, it's ridiculous. We get so used to having it. Yep, and uh, lots of different flashlights. Like I carry a, a Streamlight USB micro in my pocket every single day. Uh, it's in my pocket right now. Um, I've got flashlights in every single room in the office. I've got flashlights in every room at my place. Like. I have them everywhere because they're really inexpensive. You can find mm -hmm. good, like Streamlight Micro that I use uh, every day, just as my EDC is uh, twenty eight dollars on Amazon, and well worth the price. Nice, and I like headlamps too, um, especially when you're walking around the house or you're trying to do something, you're trying to cook in the dark. You just put a headlamp on. You can keep working with your hands, and you don't have to worry about how to hold the flashlight. Yep, and medical kits too. Uh, headlamps are a great option just because if you're, you know holding the flashlight makes everything else a little bit more difficult. So snap it on your cap, put it on your head, whatever you got to do. Absolutely. Uh, you've got survival blankets and this is a, another huge one. Um, cold, especially in the winter and things like that. Yeah. For me, like I have the little Mylar blankets in all my first aid kits, whether it be my trauma kit or it be my larger first aid kits, but two also, I, I bought the surplus wool blanket and it stays in my truck. Uh, at all times, even in the summertime, I, I keep a wool blanket in my truck. That way, if I'm out on the road, I know I can stay warm. Uh, but even, you know, uh, even in your house, like having your blankets prepared, things like that, ready to go. Because when the heat goes out, like once you get cold, it's hard to get warm back up. So trying to stay warm uh, for emergencies. If you see someone that maybe is in the water, you can pull them out of the water, get them dried off, get a fiber blanket wrapped around them, uh, things like that. So, uh, being warm is important. Uh, so I, I like that. So for, like I said, I keep the survival blankets and all my first aid kits. And then I have the surplus wool blanket that just stays in the back of the truck at all times. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, the Mylar, they, they will keep you alive in the mountains, uh, when it's, you know, 38 degrees or whatever, but it's not pleasant. No, the crinkling, like I just can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, we were, we were next to a fire and that was all we had. We were doing like a survival weekend thing. And all I had was a Mylar blanket and I only had it for one night because every time an ember would pop on it, I would lose like a foot of it. <laughs> it was pretty awful. That sucks. It did keep us alive. It was not a pleasant existence, but I was alive. Yes. So that's why I like the wool blanket. I mean, it's a lot thicker. Um, it just right. It doesn't take up much space in my truck and it, it stays back there. Yep. Uh, next up first aid kit. Yeah. So of course I think we should have a first aid kit everywhere uh, with an arm's reach. Uh, so I like the smaller kits. Uh, you could go out and buy the $300 stomp backpack. That's got everything but the kitchen sink in it. But typically I found the people who do that when they actually need it, they don't have it. You know, they, they went out and spent three, five, six hundred dollars on a first aid kit because they think it has everything from band-aids to sutures to everything they need. And then when the emergency happens, they don't have it with them. 
So I like smaller kits. Like set us, say your budget is three hundred dollars on medical supplies. Then all right, split those up. Have them in your house. Have some kits in your house. Have them out the shop. Have them in the vehicle. Have them at the range. So split those kits up. Make them smaller so they're more likely to be where you need them during the emergency. Yeah, agreed. And you, you uh, at Medical Gear Outfitters, you sell some really good small kits too, and really price conscious too. Yeah, we try to like our small kit is perfect just for about like there's a lot of emergencies you can handle our small kit, and you can buy the replacement kit, which is all the guts and a Ziploc bag for fifteen bucks, and that's with shipping already included. So, and you can handle a lot of emergencies with that small kit. So. You can think about that. You can think about uh, for your vehicle. Uh, I would look at our response kit or our first responder kit, kind of depending on what your budget is there. Um, and then all of our trauma kits would be good for the range, basically. Um, you know, if your budget is good, then you could add combat calls or sea locks. If it's not a little bit less on the budget, then you could add in, you know, just compressed calls. So you can completely um, add in to what you needed to there uh, with with the kits and supplement them throughout the house. Uh, like we were talking about ammo a few minutes ago. Like when I go to Walmart, like especially when the kids were younger, I don't miss buy as much milk now, but when the kids were younger, I would buy a gallon of milk. I'd buy a box of ammo every time I went to Walmart. And there was one night I went to Walmart and they had their generic drugs, their medicines on sale. So this huge bin in front of the Walmart. And like, I was like, there was Tylenol, there was Benadryl, there was stomach medicine, like all the, like the medicines you really truly need was in there and I was like, holy cow. So I just started piling up and I came home with like four bags of medicines that I paid less than a dollar a piece on. Wow. Hey babe, look at this. And so we stored up, like stocked all those medicines up, things like that. We still use them. You just cycle through them, uh, you know, and just use them as they come along. But, um, you know, just a little bit here and there and you can really stock up some stuff. Definitely. Uh, Water filtration. Yeah, so that's one of the big things. When you start getting flooding, uh, they always talk about drinking water gets contaminated. You have to boil the water or during a hurricane or tornado, there's no water. The water lines get busted up. Uh, or what's happened to us a couple of times is in the ice storms or snowstorms, the pipes freeze. And you're like, son of a gun. So having clean, uh, clean water to drink is super important. That's going to mess your stomach up. Like you start drinking bad water, you're going to get diarrhea. You're going to get dehydration very quickly. So having a water filter to be able to drink clean water is super important. You can buy like the little life straws. You can buy, there's tons of filters on the market uh, that are good. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You can even buy like a big bag that it, it, it's super small, but it'll expand in your bathtub and fill that with water to have clean water. Mm -hmm. uh, the life straws are awesome. You can get the tablets to clean your water. Was it, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the chemical or whatever, but iodine or betadine or... I think so. I, I, my brain just totally farted on that too. Yeah, mine, mine did too. I totally, totally lost it. But it, it adds a funny taste. To it. I just know that it adds, like if you buy the little tablets, it adds a funny taste. So like your kids may not drink that kind of water. Like we will drink that because we know we have to, uh, but your kids may not. So even like the, the Berkey water filters, like they're huge. Like you can like buy them by the gallon size and you just pour the water in there and it'll filter out by the gallon. They're amazing. And maybe even have some knowledge on how to create your own filtration with every mm -hmm. objects. There's tons of stuff on YouTube and whatever about that. Um, yeah. Water is so huge. Uh, honestly, you, you'll die so fast if you don't have water. Right. I mean, right. You can die within you know a few days of that. So, and probably honestly, we're supposed to, everybody's dehydrated. Like we're chronically dehydrated because we are really crappy about drinking water. And you, drink, um, you drink too much coffee. Yes, way too much coffee. Which is, I tell my wife that I said there's water in there, but she doesn't get it. <laughs> um, you know, we drink too much soda, we drink too much sugary drinks, and we're all con you know right on the edge of being dehydrated all the time anyway. So uh, having the ability to drink water and and if you can prehydrate for some of this stuff too, you know, if you can think about that, like you know, you can kind of get prehydrated for an event that would be that's helpful. Yeah, hundred percent agree. But yeah, it's so many water filtration options and there there's some out there that are incredibly inexpensive too. So definitely yeah, don't. Yeah, I think the live straws, like they're what, 20 bucks, something like that. Yep. So, Amazon, another one. Yeah. And so I think that's a good choice to have. Um, you know, just you can either filter out the, the water you have or you can go to the creek water or whatever and you're able to drink right out of it. So, um, and they're small too. Like you throw those in a backpack, a get home bag or whatever and, and have them ready to go. Yep. 
the the one down downfall i think i have for those that it, you know if you're drinking out of a body of water or something you have to get right down there in it or at least have a container to put it in um some of the other ones are a little bit more convenient especially if you have kids and so just something to consider yeah like we did the birchy water filter it sits on the counter so it it we don't use it all the time but we just kind of use it for if there was an emergency but it sits on the counter you can pour the water in top and it's got like a little spout on it that you can just open up pour in a glass and it's filtered so um yeah there's two different options depending like if you want to keep like the live straw in your car in case you're on the side of the road and then have a bigger water system or a different water system for home than having that uh, multiple of situation that way if someone one fails you have uh, have a backup as well yep totally agree uh, let's see. Next on the list is a multi-tool. Yeah, like I have started doing better about keeping a multi-tool with me because especially when I was working on the ambulance, like believe it or not, ambulances are not always in the best shape. So like things were breaking. So when, especially when I was on the ambulance and I would um, be able to fix something like it'd be a screw coming out or a light that need to be fixed. So uh, I think a multi-tool is nice that you can have screwdrivers, a knife. Uh, there's plenty of options out there for a multi-tool to have. Um, and they don't have to be super expensive, but to have tools to fix um, on the side of the road or even inside your house, like there's something you need to work on, uh, then those that's a quick, easy option that you're not trying to scrounge around trying to find a pair of pliers or a pair, you know, a Phillips head screwdriver that you have that staged and ready to go. Yeah, they're super handy. And especially in the survival situation, you know, you have to break something, you have to get a door open, you have to, you know, take a hose off of something and you can't get it off with your hand. Uh, any of those things really huge and really important so multi-tool mandatory yes and uh, then yeah next so start circling back i probably could have put this back up a portable uh, radio is that police scanner and we kind of mentioned that when we talked about portable radios but it, have a scanner um and then also you want to check with your local like kind of do some research uh, you can go to radioreference.com and check in your area because a lot of police fire are going to a secured system. So it means you have to have a little fancier scanner uh, to listen to them. So I think that's uh, something you need to look at. Uh, the cheap scanners that we were used to using for a long time were great, uh, but now they've went to digitals. And so you need like a digital scanner uh, and you may not be able to listen to them. So just kind of check in your area and see if your police department, your fire department is using digital. If they're not, then you can buy a cheap like Radio Shack if Radio Shacks are still around. Um, scanner uh, and listen to that way you can hear what emergencies are going on. You can hear what roads are shut down. Um, I have um, the, is it a 436 unit scanner, the portable scanner? It's, it's pretty cool. It's pricey, but I take it everywhere we travel because I can punch in the zip code and it downloads the city that I'm in and I can listen to what's going on around me. Like if we were traveling to Virginia or wherever I can punch in the zip code that I'm currently at and like, Oh, I'm listening to this car wreck. I'm listening to the responders respond to this car wreck. Uh, we were NRA in Atlanta. Like I punched in the zip code I was in for in Atlanta and I listened to all of Atlanta PD and like it, it was pretty cool. Like I'm, I'm a nerd like that. So I think it's fun to listen to those guys. And um, uh, that, that scanner I have, like it's pretty neat. Like you can punch in, it's got a program where it listens to frequencies that are right around it. So um, I've been in certain areas where I've, punch that in and you've got cops that are talking on their private channel and they don't realize that I can listen to them and they're saying some crazy stuff I'm like you should not be saying that stuff on the radio um, but there again that scanner is pricey uh, but it does a lot of cool things that in an emergency could be the difference between life and death absolutely good stuff uh, batteries you have yep so we can kind of circle back up to like where uh, the, we talk about flashlights we kind of mentioned it for a second like a lot of our batteries are are rechargeable. Uh, but, you know, going back to having lights, having batteries, uh, this could even be uh, larger batteries in case you need them for your generator, things like that. Uh, make sure your generator batteries are charged. Um, you know, just having extra batteries around because you wouldn't, you know, for that portable radio we talked about listening to, just having the ability to swap out batteries, uh, just stay in communication. Yeah. And I think another key thing here is maybe some kind of solar method of charging things. Yes. Uh, just, you know, if you're on the go, if you can't shelter in place and, and defend from there, um, being on the go, having a solar charger that will actually charge your phone or your radios or anything like that. Pretty huge. 
that's what I've been looking at right recently over the last few weeks uh, is some of the solar generators. Like they make some, I mean, they're not cheap, unfortunately, but you can buy some the good size solar generators that a lot of the off-road guys, overlanders are using and they'll run your laptop, they'll run cell phones, they'll run TVs and you can charge them with a couple of solar panels that plug right into the side of them. So like the one I was looking at was about the size of my Honda generator. Uh, so it's a pretty decent size, but you know, it's completely battery powered. So it, it's quiet. There's no noise. Like if I fire my generator up, people hear it. So uh, you may not want that in, during emergency. So um, I've really been looking at these battery powered generators just because of that reason, because of the quietness that I could uh, have internet up and going maybe, or have my laptop, my TV, my internet, something going, um, or just some feature conference to make the kids happy, uh, get the PlayStation up and going. And, give them a moment of, you know, relaxation and without making a neighbor within every square mile know that I have a generator firing. Cause it's funny. Like we had the ice storm and like we, Kenneth and I were outside and we're like, man, it's super quiet. And we live out in the woods, like out in the country. And it's still amazing how quiet it was. And I was like, man, it's quiet. And you start hearing generators fire up and like, you could hear them. And I'm like, and we fired ours up. And I'm like, so you're like, and this was like a really bad situation. People are going to know that we have a generator running. And people may want our generator. Dang. And I would hate to have to defend myself over a generator. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It, that's actually a really good point. And so the the solar ones or whatever, the battery powered solar, are they yep. silent? Mm-hmm. Damn. That is. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're just like a regular. They're, they're basically they're a battery bank. Um, so you use the solar panel to charge it up, and then it's a battery storage bank. So there's no noise in it. It just runs. It's just there, and you use like a. Um, you can either plug it into like a regular AC outlet to charge it up or you use solar panels to charge it up. All right. That, that's a pretty good one. Um, so yeah, batteries, chargers, way to charge. And then you've got matches, fire. Uh, yes. You could, fire. Yeah, you could, yeah, fire. Like you could just put fire there. So we put matches down, uh, multiple ways to start fire. Like I like the waterproof matches, uh, but even a lighter, um, you know, like, reason why that's my excuse to smoke cigars okay i got a lighter here so um are so having multiple ways to start fire to stay warm um you know there again not just having one thing having a backup to a backup is super important so having matches able to start a fire maybe you like candles uh to uh to have some light in the house maybe you do need to start a fire on the side of the road to stay warm uh you're in a car wreck and you know whatever happened you know you're hiking um, in whatever emergency it is, you got to start a fire to stay warm. Then you need multiple ways to start a fire. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. I mean, it could be food. It could be warmth. It could be signal. It could be, it could be a ton of things. And just like all this other stuff, like get educated on, you know, if you need to build a fire that people can't see, or, you know, at least doesn't smoke a ton. What do you do? Um, but then again, if it's just flat out survival, whatever it happens to be, just being able to to create fire is a huge thing. Uh, whether it's with a stick and a bow, or matches, or survival matches, or a zippo, whatever it is. And it's not as easy. People like people think, oh, I got to start a fire, and we're used to like throwing some diesel fuel on it, or throwing some lighter fluid on it. Like, all right, cool, Oof, and the fire starts up. Like, oh, I make fire. This is easy. Uh, but if you don't have that ignition source, it can be a pain in the butt. Yeah, I completely agree. I I spent some time doing all this stuff a couple of years ago, and uh, God, there was a product called Man Fast Fire or something like that that was that seemed to be really, really, really good. Because if you could even get a spark on it, it's just these little cubes that you would mm -hmm. put in your kit, and if you could even get a spark on it, it would uh, it would it would be off and running, and you could actually set other things on fire from it. It was it was pretty handy at. It's a uh, fast fire tender and it's fourteen ninety five on Amazon. Nice. So pretty good deal for that. I kind of love that stuff. You still need a way to generate a spark, but yeah, a, a directed spark, I should say. Yeah. yeah. Little striker rods are nice. The little mm -hmm. um, uh, magnesium striker rods are nice. So stuff like that. Like there's plenty of options out there to be able to start fire. So uh, I like that. Um, you know, there again, like I want to be the same warm that could be on the side of the road. Uh, that I need to start building a fire for my kids to stay warm, for my wife to stay warm, so like that. So uh, I'm scanning. I don't have much insulation like some people do. So, <laughs> all right, all right. 
<laughs> it's it's true. I can't even I can't even deny it. It's awful. But you got a good looking girlfriend now. All of a sudden, you're like hiking and trying to stay in shape. So you know, yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, wait, are are you blind? No, no. All right. Is she coming to Iraq veteran? No, no. Boo, Mister Guns and Gear. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, I was in Utah with the Brownells guys and. Uh, we were all sitting around and someone was like, so your girlfriend's pretty hot. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Guns and Gear looks up from his laptop, just totally deadpan. He's like, it helps that he's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Guns and Gear. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, don't, don't let him near your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. He's just like, yeah, he's ugly, but at least he's funny. That's, hey, got to have something in life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, clean water. We did water. Um, we, we can take that one off the list. Oh, my bad. Yeah. One other thing is, so um, I keep in my at my place, I always keep an entire case of MREs, and I also have an entire case of bagged water. Uh, have you ever seen bagged water? I have not. Uh, it is, it's literally just like single serving bags of emergency drinking water. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually bought a ton of it through Rothko um, several years ago, so I've got just boxes and boxes and boxes hmm. of it. I keep a bunch of my storage unit, which is right by my place. And then I keep one or two cases. I don't recall how many I actually have, but I'll, I'll put it in the, I'll put a link in the show notes, that stuff just in a pinch, you know, just enough to keep you alive for a couple of days. If you had to not, not a bad investment. If you just want to throw a couple of packs, it's like super, super compact and thin. And it looks like that's four fluid ounces uh, per so maybe enough to keep you alive if you throw a few in your backpack or whatever and uh, use it sparingly but that's pretty cool yeah that was something that that i found a few years ago and i was like that that could be pretty handy it's it's not enough to to make the rest of your life comfortable but it's enough to to do something and then you talked about emergency food and mres there yeah absolutely so emergency food mres um that that's that's huge i i always have MREs. Honestly, we take MREs to the range with us because we usually go out for eight to 10 hours. And uh, yeah, we just hit some MREs, lots of high calorie stuff. I've never served in the military, so I think MREs are pretty good. <laughs> and I get to pick and choose the ones that I want. And yeah, like same thing for me. I never served in the military, so I never had to force eat them, but like they're fun. Like my kids and I love to make them. Like they're like, all right, cool, we'll pop it. And we'll start steaming up. We're like, all right, this is nice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I trained a bunch of uh, military police o- over a year. I was part of a group of instructors that was brought in to solve some problems for our local um, military police battalion. And uh, so I was anywhere between once and twice a month, uh, spending an entire day, just or entire weekend actually, uh, just training military police on shooting fundamentals and things like that. And they always provided MREs for lunch hmm. and just, you know, whenever, whenever you got hungry or whatever. So, uh, I would eat a lot of them during that time. And all, those guys would just complain about them nonstop. They were like, Oh, I hate these things. And <laughs> I totally got it, but I'm just sitting there like, this, this is amazing. This is so cool. <laughs> I love this. So good. But yeah, I mean, I, I've eaten more than a lot of people, but not as much as military people. That's for yeah. Different. So I still like them. Uh, MRE Nation, do you, have you done any work with them? Yes, we're actually working on them. Uh, we're working on them with them right now. Okay, cool. So uh, there'll be links in the show notes and a coupon code that you guys can use as well, whatever. Uh, but MRE Nation is pretty cool, and you can actually design your own MREs. So I, I like them. That's what we're working with, the Skinny Medic design there. So we're working with them. So very pretty cool. excited about that. I love it, man. And then uh, last but not least, oh, I, I skipped N95. Yes. Sorry. N95 mask. There's something um, like I think about like a disaster, like building collapses or uh, some kind of where you have a lot of sick people uh, wearing mask can protect your respiratory system, protect your immune system. So if you're in an environment where honestly, like, this is bad, but a lot of people have died, then that's, that's not good for you to be breathing in things like that. So particles that you may be breathing in, you need to protect yourself, even like a forest fire, the N95 mask can help you uh, filter some of that stuff out. So I uh, was throwing that in a car just for some, uh, if there's a fire uh, to help filter some of the air or if you're uh, in an environment where there's a lot of sickness going around and N95 works great. Yeah. And and they're pretty cheap as well, if I recall correctly. Yes. Yes. So you can either buy them by the box, you can buy them bulk or you can buy them individually. Um, just kind of depends, but they're, they're, they're cheap. Yeah. And you can even get them with designs on them like Hello Kitty and whatnot. So you look cool. There you go. Yes. 
because no one wants to get smoked in the boogaloo by someone wearing a Hello Kitty <laughs> respirator. Yes, yes. <laughs> Maybe that's an idea for our our subscription box we're doing. So <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't think I skipped anything else. And then last but not least, gas. You know, we kind of talked about this. You know, at the beginning of you know, I feel like if I lived in an area that was um, prone to disasters, natural disasters, I would drive a diesel. Honestly, I would. Uh, but I don't. So I drive an F-150. Um, so having spare gas is important because we just talked about, you know, gas station starts running out immediately because people start panic buying. Um, and I get it, uh, but they start panic buying and then the gas station runs out of gas. So uh, having gas in good storage containers is important. And then put the stable, uh, the stabilizer in your gas, which is going to help it last longer because gasoline will go bad. Uh, so it's getting that bad smell, uh, water collects in it, things like that. And you don't want to jack your vehicle up by doing that, but put some stable, put some uh, fuel stabilizer in there and you can store gas for a long time. So um, I think it's important to have, you know, even for your UTVs, your four wheelers, if you need to move around or your truck or your uh, moped, uh, like Sean drives, whatever you have. So uh, you can have it around. Yep, completely agree. And uh, there's links to all this stuff in the show notes. Uh, Gasoline is the one thing that you probably can't carry in a pack. Uh, the rest of the stuff I've been keeping careful track of, you can carry it in a pack mostly um, and just have it ready and have multiple ready. I mean, clearly there's there's cost associated here, but it's like, you know, what's your life worth? I ask that question so often in classes, medical classes, shooting classes. You know, what's your life worth? Is it worth is it worth not spending a couple extra bucks when you can? Is it is it worth not having, you know, a reliable firearm? Is it worth not having uh, a proper tourniquet? Uh, you just have to you have to make decisions and, and prioritize accordingly. It doesn't have to be stuff that you order all at once, but you could get started today. You could get started tomorrow. And that way, you know, when when the bad thing happens, when when you actually need it, whether it's a car accident uh, where you kind of get stranded in the cold, we just had a cold snap. 300 collisions uh, in in 12 hours here in Colorado. Uh, it was super icy. It got crazy. There was I was driving up a hill and there's just cars all along the side. And, That's crazy. Uh, just sitting there. You know what? What if you had one of these bags in there with a survival blanket and food and water and mm -hmm. a police scanner or even a radio transmitter? Like it, it makes a huge difference. So if you can, if you have the ability to do so, start buying stuff today. You can buy it all at once. That's cool. If if you can't, you know, just buy one thing at a time and prioritize. Like I said, uh, how do you defend it? And then prioritize these things. What do you need to actually live? What's the scenario you're trying to prepare for? Uh, I think these are just the questions that I always ask myself and what I recommend people ask themselves as well. Yeah. And we'll go back to the gasoline. You know, make sure you have a good storage container, you know, that's sealed. That is that way, especially if you're going to put in your vehicle, like your truck, some of that, you want to run extra couple of gallons in your truck. Uh, in case you do get in that ice storm and you're stuck sitting on the side of the road, uh, you know, make sure it's in a good storage container, make sure it's secured. So it's not going to go flying around and it's the, it's, it's sealed. So you don't get the vapor stuff like that. Uh, so just, uh, I think Wrangler star, remember that he just did some really cool tanks. Uh, he's a, he's a wildland firefighter out West. He had some really cool can cans that mounted together that he could actually bolt to the side of your truck mm -hmm. and they were all sealed. Uh, you can put water, uh, they had like different colors, like water for water, uh, fuel and uh, things like that. So they were pretty neat. Um, so something like that, you know, would be a good idea. That way the gasoline's not sloshing around and it's, it's not in a vented system either. So you don't get the fumes. Yeah. And a word of warning, if you drive a 71 uh, Ford Pinto, don't keep gasoline in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember those things when they got rear ended, they would burst into flame. That's before my time, dude. <laughs> it was before my time too. You sure about that? I'm positive. Yeah. <laughs> Not much. It was before my time. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That'll do it for the show. There's links to all this stuff where you can kind of find some of it uh, in the in the show notes. And uh, we're, we're, we're glad to be back. I'm glad to be back. Definitely. I miss this time. I know. Me too. It was just our special time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that we got to spend together. Uh, so go check out Medical Gear Outfitters. I know he's got this subscription boxes. Uh, those are all available out there, but just to, you know, the first aid stuff that we talked about, so much of the stuff that we've talked about is available at medical gear outfitters, but get your trauma kits, your first aid supplies, all that stuff there. And you can use coupon code civilian medical get, to get 10% off, right? Yes. And then, you know, this subscription box is a great way to build up your medical supplies. We talked about that, you know, kind of maybe you don't can't do it all at one time, but you're like, Hey, right, I'm going to do a subscription box and build up my medical supplies over a year. So that's kind of what our game plan is, is to, 
do these boxes uh, and not duplicate any uh, item on purpose for the next year. Yeah, that that is amazing. I I can't wait to get mine. They start shipping like November ish, right? Yes, we're doing. We're in the middle of October's, and hopefully that first week of November we'll get everything uh, shipped out. We're already starting to kind of ramp up and get prepared for kind of kind of have an idea what we need now. So we're we're working right now. So exciting! All right, uh, check out the other podcasts. Podcasts. I said that so weird on the Firearms Radio Network, FirearmsRadio.tv. And uh, thanks for listening. And we should be back in much more regular now. I think all the all the craziness for both of us until uh, that that house gets finished. And then yes, and then you'll be super busy for a few weeks. Hopefully, but hopefully, I have a nice studio. We'll be ready to go again. So all right, we'll get some in the can. Thanks for listening, everyone, and we will talk to you in the next one. Subscribe at civmedical.com.